All right, and we're live. So, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jamie Scherer, and I am the guest uh, for the live stream today. Brad is on the line answering your questions, and uh, he reached out and mentioned that there have been multiple people asking for some tips in Fusion 360 working with uh, the form environment, or T-splines, or sculpted objects. Lots of names, lots of stuff for us to break down, and I'm really excited um, to dive in today. So what we're going to do is first kind of go over T-Splines 101. What is a T-Spline? How does it work? What's the simplest way to manipulate and work with T-Spline geometry? And then from there, I'm going to go through a quick exercise. This is one that uh, we talked about at Fusion Academy this year. If you're not familiar with Fusion Academy, it's the place to go if you want to connect and meet with the Fusion 360 com community and learn from uh, some of the experts that are out there uh, working in Fusion every day. So I'm going to go through an exercise of kind of quickly developing uh, a nunchuck, a game controller that many of you are familiar with. And from there, we're going to have a good time uh, working in T-splines in Fusion 360. So without further ado, let's dive in. So what I want to do is quickly, um, you know, take a look at Fusion 360 and first talk about what is a T-spline. And more specifically, if you're familiar or you're not familiar and you want to go try this out while I'm talking or if you're watching this back later, how do you find the form tools inside of Fusion 360? So in uh, the latest uh, UI, Fusion 360, you'll see that there's a button in the solid workspace and specifically in design under solid you'll find create form and when you hit create form it takes you into a subset of the uh, solid environment and gives you a bunch of tools for creating t-splines now what is a t-spline i'm going to probably say that more times than i'd like to um, but let's quickly define it t-splines are uh, unique geometry again this is some technology that is only in fusion 360 and it allows you to create a surface but also not be bound by a traditional uh, b rep surface that has to have uh, U and V surface directions that continue around the entire part. Now, I'm going to jump back here really quickly because I'm already talking with my hands and hopefully you're, you're following along when I say, um, when I say U and V. So, um, you know, what I want to show everyone is, you know, what I'm talking about is when you look at a, a surface, it has U and V direction. So this is me talking with my hands uh, over here in the background. And specifically what I want to show everyone or talk to everyone about is when you create a T-spline in Fusion 360. We'll jump back here uh, and take a look um, in the Fusion workspace. I'm just going to turn on an example, the design that I was working on previously, um, and we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about what a T-spline is. So coming back in here, uh, we're going to have to turn on a couple bodies. And there we go. Wait, there we go. All right, so um, what a T-spline is, I'll create something quickly that we can look at. And you'll see in Fusion 360, we have the ability to create these forms. And what, as I mentioned before, is unique about them is that when you go ahead and subdivide to start creating more and more complex geometry, you can create this T intersection. Now, as I mentioned, this is unique to Fusion 360, such that any other surface and the surfaces that you create in the patch environment need to have continuous U and V direction um, isoparms that take that go through the entire surface. This allows us to create really quick geometry and also not add more and more complexity, more and more math to the surface where it's not needed. So let's dive into this, uh, this example that I mentioned earlier. So what we're going to do, I'm going to turn off the, the kind of finished example, uh, something that I worked on previously. And what I want to do is just first talk about how would we bring in, say, a napkin sketch or an image or something that we might want to use as an underlay that we can, in this case, uh, quickly uh, use as a reference that we can sculpt around. So I'm going to turn off the ones that I have here. And what you'll find is inside of um, 
inside of Fusion in the design environment, if you go to insert, you can insert a canvas. And a canvas will allow you to first reference a plane. So where are we gonna put this geometry? And then go out uh, locally and grab an image that you can place in Fusion 360. Now the nice part about this is, again, this is a quick way to bring in an underlay, a napkin sketch, a concept, something that you want to reference. Um, and one thing that you'll get real used to after watching this lesson is using the handles or the manipulator inside of Fusion 360. So you'll see first, I use the little circle on the outside to rotate it. Again, I'm just trying to you know, maintain that it's upright or it's you know, Z up, which is the way that I'm gonna design today. I can then use the handles to move it around the scene uh, or grab the square in the middle that'll allow me to move it along X and Y, or I'm sorry, in this case, Y and Z at the same time. And you know, maybe I wanna line up, there's a reference point, I might wanna put kind of zero, zero down in the bottom corner or in the upper, you know, the top part, or again, I might reference it any uh, specific location. Once I'm done doing that, I might wanna maybe quickly scale it up to a certain size. And you'll see there's many options in the canvas dialog that allow us to make this canvas semi-opaque. So if, you know, we don't want it to kind of take over the scene, but we wanna be able to see it, I might take that down to something like 50. Um, if I want geometry, 3D geometry, to be able to be viewed through this image, right? Meaning I don't want this image to be like a cutting plane where I can't see geometry on the other side. I turn on or off display through. I can make it selectable or unselectable. I can make it renderable if I want it to show up in one of my renderings. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay. And you'll see just like that, I've added this canvas into my scene. Now, the, the one thing that you probably are thinking or you might have noticed is I didn't define anything, right? I didn't even give it a, uh, a dimension. So what I'll do is back in the browser, if this is the first canvas you put in, you'll see it adds a folder for canvases. And then at the bottom, I can right click on the latest one. In this case, it's the one that we just added. And I can go ahead and either edit it, which will bring back the settings that I used before. Or I, what I want to do is calibrate this, uh, this sketch. Now calibration allows you to do uh, one dimension, right? So I'm gonna reference you know, one known size or you know, one location that I know, and it's gonna be a point-to-point -point kind of straight pick-to-pick -pick dimension. So one thing to be aware of is you know, if I was trying to define maybe the thickness of the handle or it's the overall shape, I'm gonna as closely as I can say that the overall is you know, point to point about five and a quarter inches. And when I hit enter, you'll see it'll now scale it back up, scale it to the proportional size. So now, you know, I'm working roughly to, you know, the scale uh, of, you know, my napkin sketch or something that might have come in, you know, with no reference or completely unscaled. So now let's jump in. I'm going to, as I mentioned, I'm going to turn off uh, the one that I had previously. And I've just got two canvases in this scene. I've got, you know, a side view and a front view that I'm going to reference as we start to um, develop our quick concept for this, uh, this game controller. So before we dive in and I start sculpting this um, and, and showing you some more tips, I want to hit kind of the one-on-one -on -one level tips that you might have seen if you've watched the Getting Started videos uh, that are out there on the Fusion 360 homepage. Um, and it's my favorite way to describe how to use the form tools or T-splines in Fusion 360. So we're gonna start off by creating an object and you'll see in Fusion, we have uh, many different ways that you can create new geometry. For instance, you can start off with a primitive, box, planes, spheres, quad balls, pipes, etc. Or you could extre extrude, revolve, sweep, or loft geometry from sketch geometry. And I'll show you how that works here in a minute. But what I wanna do is just grab uh, a cylinder and I'm gonna give us something to start talking about. And I'll roughly kind of make a, a two inch cylinder and I'm gonna control the amount of faces that it has just for our first example's sake. Now, coming back in here, let's talk about the three fundamental pieces of a T-spline and the three fundamental ways that you can edit it. For starters, every T-spline is made up of faces, edges, and vertex or vertices if I had multiple. And the three easiest ways that I can manipulate these are by taking the faces, edges, and vertices, 
In this case, I'll take the edge on the upper, uh, on the top edge, and I'm going to use the edit form tool. Now you'll find edit form in the right click menu. I'll probably be getting it there most frequently during this exercise, but also modify. It's always located at the top and it's the first option in the menu. And edit form is what you'll use 90% of the time in this space. And it's the tool that allows you to manipulate in this case, if you look in the dialog, translate, rotate and scale faces, edges and vertices. So going back to kind of what I mentioned before, three types of geometry, faces, edges, vertices, three ways to manipulate it, and that's move or translate, rotate, and scale. Now we're gonna go through the exercise. I made the cylinder, and I just wanna show you what those look like, how they translate to the geometry, and then we're gonna start using some sketch geometry to create some surfaces for our game controller. So let's jump back in. All right, so back to what I already had started. I've got this top edge selected, quick hot tip, if you double click on any edge, it'll grab the entire loop. Just a quick and easy way to make sure that you get kind of a continual um, selection of edges that goes until it terminates in your sculpt geometry. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, let's start making some manipulations here. Maybe I wanna start with a primitive and I wanna start moving this around. You'll see as I grab on the center square, which is kind of the translation on this plane, I can move, rotate, maybe make another selection and move, make another selection and move, right? I'm just grabbing on that square, which allows me to move along, in this case, again, the Y, Z plane um, freely. I could translate along one axis directly by using the arrows. And as I did before, I might wanna start grabbing some of these edges and using the rotate tool. So you'll see when I grab on the circle that goes around um, this, this selection, it allows me to rotate that edge. So maybe that allows me to better line up the top edge of you know what this uh, controller would look like. I'm also noticing I might have picked two inches and that might be too big. So I could double click, grab the entire body, and then use the uniform scale, which is in the middle of the selection, to scale this down a little bit and then now we'll continue to scale and move to make those manipulations. So you'll notice in just a couple simple moves, again, I'm kind of directly manipulating this geometry. I'm moving it around to loosely line up with the, uh, the image that we imported. Now what I'll do is um, I wanna add some more sections and you'll see faces and the amount of faces that you use in the form workspace is paramount. You have to pay attention to the topology of your object and how many faces you have. The best, the best, best, best tip that anyone has ever given me and I can pass on to you is that when in doubt, start with less. You can always add more later. It's a lot harder to make manipulations and capture especially broad form when you have many, many, many faces, right? It gets kind of heavy and more difficult to, uh, to work. So jumping back, um, I'm gonna grab this bottom edge and the last quick tip in this, you know, in this kind of simple explanation or this simple 101 level uh, form T-spline uh, technology is when you grab on an edge, if you hold Alt, it'll add a new set of faces. So you'll notice here, I'm just kinda gonna grab, maybe extrude out another edge, uh, another set of faces, I'll hold Alt again. I'm gonna pull out another, maybe this time I need to scale that down and that could be scaled down in X or in Y or in all three at the same time. And then I'll just drag out one more and scale it down a little bit more. You'll notice when I scale up, it kind of flares that out. And as I scale it down, it's making it smaller, right? Very easy, but also super powerful just to be able to kind of add more faces and start to build this shape. Now, I've only been working on this one plane. If I were to rotate this around, you'll see, I haven't quite captured uh, the, the shape uh, entirely on the other side, but I could continue to work on this just the same, maybe grabbing edges, scaling this along one axis to add, you know, kind of the, you know, intended shape or that intended flare that you would typically see in this, uh, in this object. And, and notice this is also kind of passing through uh, the geometry there, but we're going to stop right there because what I want to do is kind of uncover some other techniques and some other tools that you can use, again, in service of in maybe one hour's time creating a, uh, a concept for this uh, that you know we might want to take 3d print hold in our hands make some renderings of um, and you know and, and maybe take to a design review and then also 
the power that we have with these tools in doing that making copies and then making tons of iterations um, is absolutely incredible and that's what we're going to get to today so i'm going to take this cylinder that we started forming and i'm going to delete it and we're going to go back to our side view and let's jump into some more examples so i'm going to go ahead and turn on uh, my sketches and you'll notice that before we met i was already doing some work uh, I mentioned I did this at Fusion Academy, but I just laid some simple curves on top of my image. And those are the curves that I want to use um, maybe to drive, maybe to reference, maybe to create geometry with. Um, and I'm going to show you a bunch of different techniques that we can use to do that. So first, I want to start off, and I can start really anywhere. I could start on the, the front view, the side view. I can start with any panel um, and any technique that I might show you. Uh, but the one that I want to start with is, again, in creating new geometry, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to sweep. And I want to use a sweep for a couple different reasons. One, I want to show you the power of being able to create curves and then drive them in this workspace. But also um, because it's a really great way to take a profile and sweep that profile along a path. So now you'll notice in every, every new creation tool, uh, in this workspace, I have pretty similar options. So get familiar with kind of some of these uh, these terms that I'm talking about. Now you'll see in the sweep dialog, it's defaulting to eight faces. And if you look at the result, I have eight subdivisions along, I'll call it the kind of Y axis uh, of, of my, my uh, new surface. And in the X axis, or you know, U and V, if you're thinking of it that way, I have one, two, three, four, five subdivisions, which amounts to the same that you'll see in the face dialog over here. Now, I mentioned before, start with less, we can always add more. So I'm gonna take this all the way down to one. And you'll see that with five subdivisions, I only have one span uh, in the you know Y direction or the V direction. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'll add more later. Kind of as I mentioned, I don't want to overbuild this. I don't want to make this more difficult for myself later. You know, when I want to go ahead and add some more detail. Right now, I'm kind of capturing broad form. I'm going to start off with just um, one face in one direction. Now, why did I choose five in the other? Why didn't I do one by one? Well, in this case, I already have a good idea of how maybe complex we'll look back at the at the model here you can see there's a lot of curvature that runs along you know not only the bottom uh of this uh, of this concept or this nunchuck that i'm starting to sculpt but um in both directions right and i know that if i want to match this kind of complex curve one subdivision's clearly not going to do it even two, three would probably be the closest I could get, but I still may not be able to match that um, closely or closely enough. So I'm gonna start off with five. And I've also done this before, so I know five is a better, better place to start off uh, for our example. So let's jump back, let's jump back into this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit okay. And you'll see, just like before, it went up and created a sculpted body or a T-spline for me to use. But also, I'm only working in one plane. So if I rotate this around, just take note, I'm working flat right now, right? And I know everyone is used to these brilliant, beautiful examples, but this is a really powerful way to start off when you're working in this workspace. And that's start with you know faces, start with a flat object, and then build from there. It's sometimes hard to you know give it the most complex you know, curve network. And frankly, if I had all of the curves crafted out, I probably would be better off in the sculpt workspace. I'm sorry, in the patch workspace and uh, just building that as a, uh, as a patch. But the next thing I want to do is we're going to start to add some more complexity to this surface that we created. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a tool called match. Now, the majority of the tools that you'll hear me use from probably this point to the end of our session are all going to be located under modify. But you'll also notice I'm an old AutoCAD user from once upon a time and I love to type. So I'm going to hit S on the keyboard and I'm likely going to find the majority of the tools that I'm looking for either in my shortcut toolbox 
or just by searching for them. And I love this because, you know, if you're new to Fusion or maybe you're a part-time Fusion user, um, you don't have to always remember where things are located. You know, I, from time to time, will pin things in my shortcut uh, toolbox, but I love just searching for them. I find it to be the easiest way for me. So I'm gonna use Match. And what Match allows you to do is take a T-spline edge and match it to a target. And in this case, I'm gonna match it to a curve uh, that was already pre-existing. And you'll see when I do that, it's gonna go ahead and take that edge and kind of suck it to the curve that I created. And it's gonna give me a number of different um, options that we can work through. Now, one that you'll see often in this workspace is you can choose the spacing. And the spacing is how Fusion will break up the faces or the, you know, the UNV faces that make up that surface. And it'll either make them uniform or you can pick curvature, which will set, in this case, you won't see a very big difference, but it'll set more faces closer together, or more edges closer together, where there's higher degrees of curvature. Now I'm working flat, so this is not the best example, but just wanted to point out what that is and why, um, you know, and how it works um, in, in Fusion. So say okay to that, and again, we're still working flat. I've roughly matched this. I'm not gonna fuss with it too much because we're gonna be doing lots of changes, lots of manipulations to keep working on this. So now, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna grab that edge, and you could imagine um, there's many different ways that you know I might wanna work on, um, work on this geometry. You'll also see I have some, um, in this case I'm gonna turn my my sketch off so I can grab my edge. I, I have this edge and you know I might be kind of forced to or I might be thinking boy I should just kind of pull this and you know do like I did before drag it out in space maybe grab on an edge start to manipulate it match vertices to my image and I could in you know a reasonable amount of time start to capture or get close to uh, the example that we started with but that's not what I want to do. And not that this isn't a valid workflow. There's going to be times where you want to do this. Um, but I actually think that uh, with this geometry, I have some curves that I want to use. I'm just going to undo back to where we were. Um, and in this case, if I turn on my, um, my sketches, I have some curves that I want to use. But I might need to create some more. So you'll notice I don't have any curves for the front of uh, of this shape, right? Which is a critical feature when you're looking at uh, the design that we're creating. So right inside of the form uh, tool set, I'll go ahead and create a new sketch. And I'm gonna use the fit point spline to just quickly build um, another curve that we can use and maybe match or extrude with later. So again, I mentioned Fusion Academy earlier. And while I was there, I sat in an incredible class that was, um, created and you know delivered by Jake Fowler who's one of our um, uh, one of the folks on our UX team that's our user experience team and uh, Jake explained the value of creating really crisp and um, and good curves because good curves create good surfaces and you know the same uh, the same rules apply here that apply uh, to creating sculpted objects and that's keep them light wherever you can. Right, so I'm going to come in here. I might think in some cases, you know, I, uh, I, you know, you might be familiar. You might have done this before. You know, I might think, boy, this is a complex shape. I should come in and, you know, build a bunch of, a uh, bunch of curves to try to more closely match that shape. But one thing that you'll see, and you can also come in here and use um, the curvature comb to to take a look at the result, is that it's not going to give me a very great um, result and oops I think I'm there we go let's go back in there and into the sketch palette and um, no oh, there we go let's go back to sketch eight sorry guys back in here again I could look at the curvature comb and what you can probably already tell is that I've overbuilt this curve I've got way too much uh, way too many points that are defining it and I want to keep them as light as possible so same as what I would typically do with um, uh, with my uh, my sculpted objects, so you'll see here, you know, not only are they not in line, and clearly I did that purposely by just kind of clicking quickly through space, but you know, if you compare that to uh, the curve on the other side, which was you know kind of created a little bit more quickly, I might 
start to come in, use that comb to inform or you know give me some insight into how to make that more uniform around my shape. Now the reason I'm not gonna kind of spend too much time doing that, and again I would just like I mentioned before, use the handles to start to craft this um, into something that's much more uniform. Um, but more importantly, uh, I'm not going to fuss too much because I'm only creating that curve in, surface, in service of creating a 3D curve, which will kind of be the connection of my two sketches and also where I want this surface to come together. So I'll show you what that means. Um, now, as I mentioned before, with this first surface that we started to create, I could use the same match tool that I mentioned before and maybe grab this edge and match it to the, uh, the curve that we just created. But that's not the right location, right? Because um, this not only matches the sketch that we just created, but it also matches the sketch that I had previously created, right? You'll see the red line and the new sketch line, they need to work together, right? Really, that edge, those two edges move together and come together in space. And that wouldn't be the right answer for what I'm trying to do. The tool that we want to use in this case is down under create in the sketch environment and under project include, you'll find intersection curve. And if you hover over that tooltip, it explains it really well. What an, inter uh, what an intersection curve does is it allows you to take a sketch curve and then find the intersection in space with another either sketch entity or a curve or a face. So what I'll do in this case is first select my new curve and say that I want to find kind of that intersection between that and we'll zoom in here so I can get the right selection and that edge in space. And you'll see the projection that it creates for me satisfies both curves, right? One and two in space and will allow me to now take advantage of that match tool one more time. And that won't be the last time we use match, but it'll allow me to go ahead and match that to that geometry. And now if we just kind of look at it, I'm not only kind of close to the, the original sketch that I created, but also from the front view, we're nicely matched up along that edge as well. So again, really nice tool uh, to use, especially if you want to drive your, your forms uh, by curves um, in, uh, in this workspace. All right, so let's continue to move on. We're going to go through probably the same set of, uh, of workflows a couple times. Um, and I'm doing that on purpose. One, just so that you can continue to see how these tools work, but also um, because there's little tips and techniques inside of this that maybe address different scenarios. So I'll show you what I mean. Next, I'm going to go ahead and we'll use extrude. And just as I mentioned before, we can always um, take a, uh, you know, a profile and extrude that as well. Now, just like I mentioned, I probably want to grab that intersection curve again in space. So I'll go back and we'll edit sketch eight. I'm going to do the same thing, do an intersection curve. This time I'm going to project from my front curve and then I want to grab this next curve in, in my profile. That's kind of, you know, the, it, in some case, it's kind of like the in, invisible edge where my front surface and my side surface come together. There might be a blend or a fillet there, um, but that's kind of what I want to drive along. I want to have that nice uh, crisp edge in space. And once I do that, we'll go back into our sculpt. I'm going to turn off, oops, I'm going to turn off some geometry here just to clean it up. And we're going to use extrude and I'll extrude this out. Now, you might be thinking, why on earth am I extruding that in the wrong direction? Um, which would be a very valid question. Why don't I extrude it back? Well, I can. It's a little bit harder for you to see. Um, I'm going to extrude it this way because really I'm taking that curve and I'm purposely just extruding it out so I have the geometry. I'm also thinking right now, by default, I don't want to use eight faces because I know that this surface is going to mate with the other surface we created and that has five faces. Now, not that I couldn't subdivide one or the other later, and not that we can't join them together when they're not multiples of each other, but I don't want to start off with, you know, misaligned topology, especially this early in my design. So whenever I can, I'm going to try to maintain topology, meaning the kind of breakup and the math of my surface. Um, that's even with one another. 
So um, I'll just say okay to that and you'll see I kind of extruded my surface in the wrong direction and I did that because this edge matters, this one doesn't or it doesn't belong there and it didn't belong in the other direction either. What I'm gonna do is use a tool called weld vertices and what weld vertices allows me to do is grab one vertice and weld it to another. And I'm gonna just quickly go through these examples and basically think of it like, you know, you're a surgeon. We're just kind of stitching up this surface. I'm maintaining that first curve that we created and I'm stitching that to the second one that we're creating. I'm also gonna go ahead and leave creased edges on. And the reason I'm doing that is because I just wanna kind of stick with as closely as I can the kind of intended curves or the intended features that I, uh, I sketched out previously. And if I were to turn that off, um, Fusion will automatically create a uh, perfectly smooth G2, if you're familiar with that term, blend between those surfaces. It would look something like this, which is kind of also a really um, nice uh, blend that I might have there, but that's not my goal, at least at this point, and I can always do it later. So just so you know, make sure you, know, you can always crease, you can always uncrease. Fusion is so powerful, it allows you to go back and forth, and we can even have a combination of both and have a crease that blends and kind of disappears into a perfectly curvature continuous surface. All right, uh, let's march on. So uh, the next thing we're gonna do, gonna be the same workflow. I'm gonna grab just another edge because I wanna maintain that kind of front uh, profile. I will extrude it. This time we'll kind of go in the right direction. I'll extrude it as five faces, say okay, and we'll weld one more time. There's some other tools that might work here. You could try like a merge edge, but I'm a big fan of weld vertices because it allows me a lot of control. You'll see I have a few options. I can weld vertex to vertex, which just as it sounds, first selection moves to the second selection. Vertex to midpoint would take the two selections and kind of average them out or put them in space together. Um, and weld within a tolerance allows you to specify a tolerance to weld them within. So as I mentioned, I like this because I know this vertice is in a good spot, this one's not. So I'm gonna purposely move the first selection to the second selection. And there we go. And say okay. So now, um, so far so good. We're kind of moving along. I like what we have so far. But for one, I've only been working on half of my object, not a problem, um, but something I might want to consider. And there's some tools in, in this space that'll help you uh, along the way. So the symmetry tool, if you're working on an object that's symmetrical, is a great way to work on one half of a product, one half a design, and have Fusion automatically mirror and do the same updates on the opposite side. Now, as I was kind of alluding to, I'm working on half. I'm gonna go ahead and use mirror duplicate, which will take the geometry that I created and then duplicate it. It'll give me a second set of geometry on the other side. And when I say okay, it's going to do a couple things. First, it's gonna to weld together the bodies on either side, which, whoops, I already saw that I missed a step, something that I wanted to show you. But um, you'll also notice that when it welds them together, especially on the front, uh, the front of this object, it's kind of starting to pull it in, right? So if I hit undo, you'll see I'm still kind of matching that curve, but when I did that weld, they it kind of pulls it in. And that's because Fusion is always maintaining that perfect continuous surfaces between, uh, between faces, unless you have a crease. So again, G2, perfect, G0, there's a crease there. Um, but also it's taking those two objects and they're within a tolerance and I had weld turn on. So instead of putting them as a hard edge, it's going to average them out and, and kind of make that a nice perfect um, uh, surface, right? Between the, the blend. So going back to um, our design, I'm kind of okay with that. One thing that I, you know, was, I didn't really mention yet, but I'll point out now is, You'll see in some cases I'm using curves to um, I'm using curves to drive my design, but also remember that the sculpt workspace is a direct manipulation environment, and it's not. What I mean by that is it's not parametric. 
In parametric, if you're familiar with kind of solid modeling, again, in the solid workspace, even the surface workspace inside of Fusion, means that if you change those curves, the surfaces or the solids or whatever you create off of them will update automatically. Now that doesn't happen here in the sculpt workspace, but it doesn't mean that I can't continue to use those curves you know, to craft and drive my design. So going back to what we just did, I'm gonna do mirror duplicate. Um, I'm gonna mirror our, uh, our design along this plane say okay, you'll notice it kind of pulls it off of that sketch, but that's all right, because I'll just come back, I'm gonna use match again, because I just wanna you know, be aware and continue to maintain um, that feature profile in the front, and um, there you have it. Now, one thing that you might also see from time to time is when you use symmetry, there might be times where you know Fusion, uh, it'll give you a little warning and it'll tell you that you know it can't maintain symmetry you can always clear it and in most cases some cases put it back on and maintain that you know now one selection the blue side is symmetric to the yellow side and if I were to make changes to one side the other side automatically will uh, will update right it makes it super easy to work on a part like this that is symmetrical all right so let's keep moving on. So the next thing that I want to do is, you know, maybe start to figure out the back half uh, of our design. And there's a few things that I might want to try. So for one, you'll see it's, it's kind of open on the top and it's open in the back. And there's a couple things that I might try. The first one we'll use is a tool called Bridge. And what Bridge allows you to do is, well, just like it sounds, Bridge, uh, one side or one selection of faces uh, or edges to the other side. And it also will work with, as long as you make multiple, as long as your selections are multiples of each other. So you'll see two faces can bridge to one, four could bridge to two, two can't bridge to three. And you'll get a little warning down here that tells you exactly that. They must be equal to or multiples of each other. So keep that in mind. I'll just unselect the edge that we did here. I get a quick preview. We'll say okay. And now I've kind of started the, the bridge across the top, um, which does not have a creased edge, which I'm trying to maintain along my product. So we'll just right click crease and then same workflow that we did before. We'll use weld and I'm gonna weld this vertice to that vertice and there we go. So working with, again, the same tools that we've been using before, I might also want to come in and match that top edge. It's something that I wasn't really worried about um, prior, but feels like it's feels like it's time for us to do so. So I'm going to grab that edge and match it to this sketch profile and say, OK, you'll see. Looks like maybe something went awry with my symmetry. Fusion wants to remove it, which is fine. I'll clear it. And then what I'm going to do is just put it back on and say that these two edges are, those two faces are symmetrical. And then we can keep kind of driving our, uh, driving our design. All right. So now, now the underside or kind of the bottom uh, that we were working on here. A few different ways we could do this. We could extrude, we could build faces. What I'm going to do is um, I'll just stick with the same kind of workflow that we started with earlier. And I'm going to build a surface from the curve that I created. This time I'll make it symmetric and just kind of drag it out in space. And then I'll use the same tool we did before. Let's go with weld vertices and whoops, you'll see I missed a click there, but that's okay. So as I go to weld, you'll notice I used eight faces again, right? Stuck with kind of the default and wasn't paying enough attention. Now there's a couple things I could do. I could undo and delete this. Um, I could also come through and grab edges and delete them, right? And then Fusion will rebuild the um, rebuild the surface, right? Making it maybe the five or um, you know the selection that I was looking for before. Um, but what I'm going to try to do is we'll just undo this because I want to maintain that uh, that extrusion. Uh, I'll just, because I caught it at the right time, we'll go ahead and make sure that I hit five. We'll extrude this symmetric in space, say okay, and then again, we'll weld those vertices back together. All right, so um, now we're, 
kind of really starting to to get this uh, get this put together. Oops, I want to weld one to two, one to two, just kind of stitching this back up. You'll see Fusion automatically turn that red because it's not able to figure out the symmetry because I only did one side, right? So now we'll come and do the other side and within just a couple seconds here, we should have the back part of this design kind of stitched up. And just make sure I get the right selections. Say okay. And there we go. Oh, looks like I got one more, and I know this because I've done it a time or two before. That actually looks good, right? Looks like everything's fine, but why do I have this crazy kind of pinch in the corner? So one thing that's really helpful, if you grab on any of your objects and under utilities, you'll find there's different display modes. And one that I'll use frequently, probably 50% of the time when I'm designing, is box display. And what box display does is takes your object in this case it it has fusion stop calculating the smooth representation of the surfaces and just gives you kind of the caged representation and a lot of times that'll show you imperfections or you know maybe uh, topology that you didn't expect uh, and it's a really great tool um, when you know you can't kind of figure out why maybe your surfaces are, are not as you expected. Now what I know happened here is I missed a weld right here on the center, um, which will continue calculate that smooth curvature along that edge. And there we go. So let's go back, let's look at what we've created um, so far. I like what I've got. I have to do one more quick match. Um, so what I'll do is just clear that symmetry and then I will put it back in. I know that seems a little tedious, but it's just something that uh, might happen from time to time. But once I come back in and match that edge together, oops, double click, it selected the entire edge loop, which is kind of not what I want. Now that that's all stitched together, it's gonna continue all the way around. I'll remove that selection and then just be a little bit more purposeful with the selections here and match that to that selection there. And then we'll say, okay. All right. So let's see how we're doing on time. Good, we're about 40 minutes in. Hopefully this is really helpful. I know there's been some questions coming in. Brad's been, you know, kind of answering them as best he can uh, along the way. And I'd be happy to, you know, kind of look through some of those and, uh, and answer any other questions that you know, are kind of still out there. But what I want to do with the time that we have left is, you know, continue to take this a little bit further, but also talk about how this comes together um, outside of the sculpt workspace. So um, you'll notice I still have an open edge down here at the bottom. So I'll use the bridge tool just as we did before. Bridge is a great tool to work uh, in this scenario. Sometimes I might want to try something like, um, you know, just building the faces manually. You'll also notice, you know, I'm doing this as two faces and I, I kind of already have the foresight of knowing that if I did this as three, I'd have a funny, um, I'd have a funny topology at the bottom, right? I've got two faces down here, two faces on the front side. So I want to maintain one, two, three, four, and a nice continuous kind of smooth um, transition, right? Even though those are unwelded, you'll see that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four faces will continue to kind of flow together across the bottom part of my design. So we'll just weld um, this back together, keep that curvature in the front. I'll weld together. I might have to come in here real tight to make sure I'm picking the right points. Um, we'll weld that together and uh, say okay. I can also tell, you know, there might be, uh, I might want to look at the surface continuity down here at the bottom. I'm just going to make a quick edit to it um, so that it doesn't kind of dip and have a you know, have like a reverse draft or like a weird pitch on the bottom. But um, in just a couple of minutes, I have something um, that I'm kind of happy with, right? And again, I might want to take a look up here at this top part, same, uh, you know, same rule applies. I think probably this point in space uh, is, you know, potentially, whoops, not without symmetry. Um, <laughs> this point in space is uh, potentially not, you know, as uh, aligned with my sketch uh, as it was previously. So you'll see as I pull that out, it'll kind of flatten that out. And I'd like to think 
um, if I turn back on my uh, my canvases here, yes, that's much closer to the intended design than it was a second ago. Um, and so now I have something created, right? I've got a nice continuous body uh, that will take over to the solid workspace. Mind you, there's a lot of other things that I can do here. Um, I've been working with creased edges purposely all along. I kind of mentioned before, but if we take this and uncrease it, well, now we'll take a look at what would this look like with you know, kind of a G2 blend across that edge. Um, you know, maybe what I might start to think about is doing a copy and paste, right? I've gotten so far, but now I've got, you know, design one and design two, right? So I can start to, um, you know, start to look at alternates or, you know, design um, alternatives right here very quickly and easily in the, the form workspace um, and certainly take these to be, you know, printed or rendered or whatever uh, I want to do next. So um, let's do that. I noticed there's one more thing that I missed down here. I'm missing a crease uh, on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and crease that so that my... Um, uh, so that my uh, my crease runs all the way around the part, and um, I think I have two. There we go. I've got two of the same bodies on top of each other, so we'll delete one. That was just a kind of misclick on a quick copy paste uh, from a second ago. All right. So now, um, with that created, we're gonna hit the green button, finish form, and voila. Um, everything that we just did in the sculpt workspace, this is my favorite part. This is truly the magic of working in Fusion 360. Uh, everything I just did in that form workspace moves over into the solid workspace. And in this case, it automatically is um, a solid body because I had a kind of continuous watertight solid uh, in the form workspace. And Fusion will automatically convert that over into a solid. If it wasn't, if I created an open-ended surface, um, if I jump over here, you know, I think you'll see an old example of something I created previously. Fusion will create a surface, and that's a surface that you could take into the surface workspace and build a patch or, you know, fill or slice, or dice, whatever you want to do with it. So just remember that the, the form workspace is not intended to be the only tool in your toolbox. The beauty of Fusion is that you have all of these workflows working together that allow you to really easily, you know, work in the right workspace with the right tools at the right time. So um, the last thing I wanted to do was let's kind of work with some more traditional solid modeling features on, um, on the design that we worked on. So I left these creased and I left them creased again for a reason. Maybe I know that, um, you know, we have a a specific fillet that we want to put on that edge, right? A known, you know, kind of uh, a known dimension. Maybe that's, you know, a, oops, an eighth of an inch, or it could be a sixteenth of an inch, or, you know, three millimeters, or whatever that might be, you know, for your design. So I'll add that in there. I could also come in, make sure that it's a G2 fillet. I might want to change it from a constant radius to a variable radius, which, you know, would give me the ability to have a you know, maybe a really tight radius at the top, um, but a kind of thicker uh, radius along uh, along the intersection. So there's just lots of lots of options that you have here. You know, I'll make this an eighth of an inch, and I'm just I'm kind of winging it now because I'm having fun. I hope you guys are too. Um, so we'll just go in. I'll go point six two five top and bottom, and you'll see that you know my blend is kind of going from. Uh, a tighter fillet to a thicker fillet and then back to a tighter fillet um, along the way. But that wasn't my intention. We'll just go back to constant. We'll leave it at a 16th of an inch and check it out, right? I went, started off with that creased edge. Now I've got a nice, you know, kind of blend uh, that is uh, right on that feature line. And then the last thing that I want to do is let's go ahead and I want to split this part, maybe split it and shell it um, because you know, I'm gonna go ahead and 3D print it, and I want to use that. Uh, I want to use that geometry uh, to, you know, eventually create something that's manufacturable, something we might make a mold from, um, or you know, in this case, just 3D print for my design meeting that's in 11 more minutes. So um, let's jump back into Fusion, and we'll we'll talk about what else we can do. So with the Geometry that uh, we created, I'm going to go ahead and first, I'm going to create a patch and I'm going to 
go into the surface workspace again from solid to surface I'm just gonna grab that kind of hard edge here and create a patch and you might wonder you know why I guess <laughs> why am I creating a patch um, I'm doing that just so I could you know basically extract um, oops that kind of parting line or that you know that hard edge that I left in my uh, in my design there we go actually let's grab that one more time I think I've I've got like fat finger itis today and I'm grabbing the the wrong selection so we're gonna chain select this around our part and um, there we go now we've got it so I'll say okay to that and if I were to turn off my solid you'll see all I did was just basically build back in uh, a surface that is that uh, that hard edge and I'm gonna use that surface to go back in the solid workspace and split my part so uh, underneath uh, the modify menu you'll see split body and I'm gonna go ahead and split our uh, our remote control and I'm gonna split it with that face and extend the split tool just so that you can see it's gonna run all the way the rest of the way around the part and split that solid into now two solids so down at the bottom you'll see you know 37 and 35 are the two sides of my uh, of my controller and I'll turn off one side and what we'll do now is use the shell command to shell this to you know I don't know maybe a sixteenth of an inch and say okay now one thing that I know you know you might be very familiar with if you've used solid modeling tools in the past and you know I was uh, it's happened to me and just kind of prepping and, and working through this example previously is sometimes you might find an example where I tried to shell this but it creates a really tight or you know it almost overlaps itself in that bottom corner because I made that almost too tight I think um, here's the great part about fusion even though the form tools are not parametric they are parametric in the sense of the timeline so I could jump back into the uh, the form environment and you know maybe as I mentioned that is too tight of a uh, of an exchange I could may pull this out you know make that not so pinchy down at the bottom hit OK hit finish form and then it's gonna go through and recalculate um, right back through and right through the shell and the split um, of course the other side of my body updated automatically as well and I'll do a shell on this side and in just a short amount of time and as promised to my friend Brad who's been patiently answering the questions over there in chat um, in you know less than maybe an hour uh, in this case we were able to create a, a controller right and again this is just a, a quick concept I might have to take it a little bit further add in ribs and bosses or you know cut out the holes for the buttons but you know you'll see how quick and easy it was for me using the form tools but also not just using the form tools as you know a wild push pull um, way to make lumpy mashed potatoes right I want to make sure that I'm using the power of the T-spline tools to um, you know to manipulate geometry easily but also the power of sculpt I'm um, sorry, of solid and surface and curve geometry to define and make sure that I'm creating high quality surfaces um, with this tool set. So uh, just jumping back over really quickly, um, you know, I think I started off and I actually don't even remember if it was turned on originally. You know, here's an example of, you know, something that, uh, you know, would be kind of taking this a little bit further and starting to add in some uh, some more features buttons but you know again in in just a short amount of time you'll see how we were able to kind of define and, and create that um, create that geometry and uh, and it's only going to be a little bit more effort to take this through to something that's uh, you know going to be a, a great example um, of a high quality consumer product that we might take to manufacturing or you know we might be pitching in our design meeting um, later today so um, as I mentioned, um, you know, Brad's been answering questions. If there's any other questions, please keep them in there. Uh, comments down in the field. We're always watching. We're looking for your suggestions. So if there's a session that you want to see us, you know, kind of 
take a stab at in the future or something else that you're you know kind of curious a workflow that you want to learn more about please feel free to reach us um, through this channel it's been a pleasure to get back on here it's been a while since i've had a chance to do a live stream so um, hope this was helpful again uh, hope to see you soon and uh, have a great rest of your day take care